Chuck, 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 Chuck. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at the swollen pickle from Way Huge. First off, let's just appreciate the naming and aesthetics of way huge pedals. Like, they're so cool. It looks awesome on anyone's pedal board. So the swollen pickle is their swollen, 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 swell. The swollen pickle is their kind of main flagship fuzz pedal. Now, new, these cost around 128 pounds, kind of around the 138 quid mark. And that's kind of standard for kind of way huge pedals and this kind of quality of pedal. I think that's a pretty decent price considering all the features that you're getting, as well as some hidden features, which we'll get onto in a wee little bit. So taking a look at the unit itself, we've got the two massive knobs, which are loudness and sustain. The sustain is essentially the amount of fuzz that you're getting on the signal, and then the loudness is your volume. Now, one thing that is very apparent in this pedal is that it is loud. This is an extremely loud pedal. For the demo I have later on, I've mainly got this only on about like nine o'clock. I'm going through the 96 HX stop, so it might react slightly differently. But Jay, who I'm borrowing this pedal off, so much said that it is it is a loud pedal and he normally plays it through his amp so i'd be inclined to say that it reacts in the same way anyway so in the middle we've got a filter and this allows us to go from the low end to the high end it goes between a low pass and a high pass filter which is i think a really really handy feature for this pedal to the left of that we've got a little scoop knob which is controlling if you want a scooped sound or to leave the mid frequency flat. And then last but not least, the crunch knob. I don't quite know why this is called crunch, but I like it anyway. And this is basically controlling the amount of compression that you're getting uh, on the sustain. So those are the main knobs and what the knobs do. Really nice is actually, which you don't see much nowadays really, is the option to power this with a nine volt battery. I got a little compartment at the bottom there, which is actually really neat. I really like the design of this and how it fits in there. You might refer to it as the Optimus Prime of pedals because there is more than meets the eye. So by taking out the screws in the back, lifting off the casing, you get access to two extra knobs. Two extra knobs. Weird, weird design that they would be underneath, but they're kind of master settings that you can change and then just leave as they are. And they do the following. So the one on the left hand side is for the clip and the clip controls varies between a smooth or open fuzz sustain, affecting your fuzz knob and the type of fuzz you're getting. And the voice knob sets the intensity of the mid scoop, and so you're kind of controlling what mid range that's affecting. For bass in particular, that's a really handy tool to have, I think, because the mid range is actually where a lot of the action might be happening in terms of blending it in with those guitars, which at the end of the day is what we want the bass to do. Or maybe it's just for guitars. It's actually not. It's designed with both in mind, which is really cool and handy because you don't have to worry about losing any low end. And this thing certainly doesn't do that, in my opinion. For this demo, I thought I'd do things a little bit differently in that I'm not going to play and adjust the pedal and play and adjust and play and adjust and play and adjust and play and adjust. Because there are so many features on this, I thought it would be easier to set up a loop and then adjust it accordingly. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think that this is a better or worse way of demoing pedals. Obviously the loop after a while can get a little bit annoying, um, so just bear that in mind. So this is going from my Yamaha BB434, which you, which you would have seen in the intro, straight into the Veilton GP100s, which is being used as a looper, into the Swollen Pickle, and then into the Line 6 HX Stomp, which is acting as our amplifier. So that's got the Ampeg SVT4 Pro, as all my videos normally do. <gasps> okay, let's have a listen. Thank you. 
So, does this tickle my pickle? Yes, it does. This fuzz sounds awesome. At first, I found it a bit overwhelming, and when first plugging it in, I didn't get that instant like, yeah, this is awesome, I really love this kind of feeling. After playing with it in this demo, and really delving deeper into some of those tones, I really, really like it. Fuzz is just different to distortion in the way that inspires your writing. I wanna write more riffy stuff. I wanna write more riffy stuff and like doing hammer-ons between two notes, like da -da -da -da. a lot of the things I've played in this demo kind of do that because that's just how it naturally inspired me. And at the end of the day, that's what a bit of gear should do. Have it really subtle or you can have it an absolutely mental. And personally, I quite liked it about here. So that's about, you know, one or two o'clock. Now the real fine tuning comes down to the three knobs in the bottom. So I quite like to kind of find the sound I like and then adjust the filter accordingly to see, okay, I want a bit more high end in there, so I'll move it a bit more clockwise. The thing with the crunch, which is meant to be a bit of compression, I found what this actually does, or what I was hearing back from it, is that it's kind of, it mixes in a bit more of your clean tone by the sounds of it. And it's not a blend knob by any means. It's, it's not like, oh yeah, that's none of your clean tone, that's all of your clean tone. Because the thing is with the fuzz, you kind of lose the personality of the bass a little bit, like the pickups and the type of bass it is, like it becomes a bit indistinguishable sometimes. Um, whereas if you're turning up the crunch a bit, adding that bit more compression to the sustain, I found that I could start to hear uh, that, P, that PJ configuration coming through a bit more. I could hear the personality of the guitar a bit more through that. So I quite liked it. But these two being matching. So there are so many different sounds and tones and I probably didn't capture that in my demo, all the different things that you can do. Uh, and so I'd really recommend, if you're gonna get one of these, is to set up a loop like I did, because then you can really start to, okay, get that sound, yeah, oh, that sounds better, and you kind of get that feeling of, and you can hear more what it's doing, particularly with like the, um, is it the clip or the voice? Particularly with the clip knob. Um, I feel like if I had played it with it all the way up, okay, turned it down, played it, I wouldn't have heard much difference, um, just in my ears, whereas when you were, when I was moving it, that's when I think I could hear the difference. Um, I was like, ah, okay, subtle, but it kind of changed the type of fuzz you were getting. Um, and personally, I liked them how they were left, which was just both of them all the way to the right. I think it sounds so good, and I would recommend picking one up, even for full price. I think that's a good price you're getting, and whether you want it subtle or balls to the wall, you can really have it all. <gasps> I feel like I've been speaking and playing for ages today. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like button. Comment down below what you think about this, and maybe what other pedals you want me to check out. I'm definitely going to see if I can pick up the pork and pickle, which is the overdrive circuit from the pork loin and the fuzz circuit from the swollen pickle. Uh, I think that would really, uh, really do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.